Does anyone consider themselves a software developer? Yeah. Yes? How about, how about a manager? Yeah? It's a trap, yeah. It's true. So yeah, this crew down here in Austin asked me if I'd come say words and also give them money, so here we are. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like a red hat. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that, but not really. Because mostly I just like putting myself on slides with logos. So this is me with the Red Hat logo. This is also me with the Red Hat logo. Me again with the Red Hat logo. And, and me, what like, I want you to take away from these slides is that I come in various configurations of hair and beard. And when you encounter me in the wild, don't be afraid. It's the same monster. So I did, I did come to Austin and say words. Well, the first time I came was what, like 2012 or something? It was a long time ago. That was fun. No, no true DevOps or something? It was, that was a crazy time. So here's a little thing. I hate the word DevSecOps. Well, I also hated the word DevOps. And before that, I hated the word cloud. But here we are. Get off my lawn. So here's a little thing sometimes people say, which actually annoys me. I invented DevOps. <laughs> which is, you know, embarrassing. Because in reality, I didn't invent DevOps. I stole it. And I stole it from my friends because I, I enjoy this fairly privileged exposure to the internet being built and having kind of friends that did that. And I was sitting in this conference talk in 2009 watching my friend John Alspa and my friend Paul Hammond talk about doing 10 deploys per day at Flickr. And that was kind of mind-blowing at the time, although now it's passe. And I was sitting there and I, was, I started tweeting and I said things like this. So this is the first one that I tweeted that I tagged DevOps, which is why DevOps has the name DevOps. So I said, don't just say no, you aren't respecting our people's problems. And it was about Dev and Ops, but I think that's actually pretty good to, to like apply to security too. And there's a bunch of these that kind of came out of that. Provide constructive feedback on the current aches and pains. You can't prevent failure, prepare for it develop ability to respond to problems quickly and effectively. Now mind you, I was stealing this from Paul and John. And then my friend in Belgium, who was watching along on the Twitters, decided that was what we were gonna call this conference, that we were already planning. Uh, at the time, when I first started, I was calling it Agile Infrastructure. But then it's like, we're gonna call it DevOps Days. And the rest is history. Yeah. So I stole this from someone, and if you know who they are, tell them I, he stole the Vasa from me, and I want it back. And that's funny if you know the inside joke. So this, this phenomena, this, this perception, I think uh, partly is a function of, of this, which is that there's this spectrum from, on one side, putting cat pictures on the internet to maybe some money to people will die. And especially in the early days, the majority of what we'll call the DevOps conversation really focused on putting cat pictures on the internet, which might have different uh, considerations for security for obvious reasons, right? Or, wh or what's acceptable? What, what's the risk profile of these types of things? So then as that evolved, there's, a, there's kind of a the first DevOps days in the US, this, this calms, or, or first it was CAMS, came out of Damon and John. John's here. And then Jez kind of added lean, and I like lean, and I'll tell you why at the end. Culture, automation, lean metrics, and sharing. But what does that mean? And, and after you can say that, what are you supposed to do? And I spent a lot of time in talks over the last few years trying to make these things actionable. And I'm not gonna, I don't really have time to go through what each of those mean to me, but I'm just gonna kind of whiz through this. So one is that they're all connected and they all kind of 
have to be in balance. And if they get out of balance, they're not, they're not really helping you. Like, so if you have a lot of automation, but no monitoring, then that's not good because you just took down all your infrastructure and you don't know. Well, your customers will call you, but. And, and then to make it actionable, I, I borrowed this as the root of it. It's this Western topology of culture. And I won't go into the details today, but you basically can agree, hopefully you'll agree, that pathological is bad. You know it's bad, it's called pathological. And then, and then generative is better, right? And that, and that we have this kind of spectrum from not as good to better, right? And we try to get better. And then I made this essentially sort of like a three by three for all of them. So I think manual is not as good as scripted, is not as good as a platform, right? And I'm gonna try to do this justice by the end with the little security metrics is the same. So in, in the unmonitored case, you have a bunch of people who at best are looking at tail minus F on a bunch of terminal windows. And then in the kind of highest performing, uh, we, we basically are building observability into the applications. We're instrumenting applications from the outset. And then I feel this is actually the most important one, or I feel it's the most impactful one, that this is a global community of practice, and everyone's solving very similar problems, and that we can all advance each other's practice much faster if we share those solutions, if we share those problems with each other, than if we don't. And then last but not least, Lean, if you study Lean, actually kind of talks about all of these things also. If you go back in the literature and, and study it, um, we'll ignore what a terrible metaphor manufacturing is for software. But the thing that I love to add from Lean, or you know, coming from this Japanese uh, framing, is this notion of Kaizen in, in continuous improvement. And then just to stay with the motive, the motif, uh, I made a three, three column thing. So on one side, we have complacent, motivated, and inspired. And I would hope, hope, share this belief with you, that complacent is worse than inspired, right? For getting work done and doing the right thing. Also, calms sounds way better than cams. So here we are. Now, let's add security. Why not? So this is, this is just kind of a framing, but in a lot of places, a lot of cases, what people call security is really theatrical. Like it's, and people say that's security theater, right? It's like, after the fact, maybe we'll apply some tools and we'll scan some stuff, but very, very few organizations are actually thinking about security from first principles as part of the software development process, as part of the thing that happens in the very beginning. It's, in, in a lot of cases, in a lot of places, security is after the fact. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that um, as we finish out. So, this is legacy me in 2010. In a blog post, I wrote what DevOps means to me. I said developers and operations can and should work together. System administration is evolving to look more like software development. And last but not least, and I think this is the most important, as I already said, it's evolving together as a global community sharing solutions. Now, DevSecOps, me in 2019, developers and operations and security can probably work together. I know, it sounds controversial in some places, but let's try it. And then, and then also we have to recognize that security is evolving to be more and more software centric and, and using both the software as the tools and also software as the, as the, um, like the framing and the, and the fabric for all this. And then hopefully, I suggest take my advice, you share your solutions as a global community of practice. Because here we are, 2019, and supercomputers everywhere are connecting all human knowledge with high-speed networks, right? Like we walk around with these magic devices, this is more powerful than every computer on the planet when I was born, it's connected to high-speed networks with everything that I ever wanna know, and also connected to the adversaries, right? So that's where we live. And, and every aspect, so people say software is eating the world, really what it is is it's about the, the experiences that we're creating, right? So every aspect of human performance and experience that can be optimized by software will be, including owning you, right? Like that's happening right now. So this is Little Idea's definition of DevOps, optimizing human performance and experience operating software with software and with humans. Now 
this is my definition of DevSecOps. Let's just change the word to securing software. Let's secure software with software and humans, because these are social technical systems. It's not, the tools aren't enough. You have to actually change people's behavior too. So we implemented DevOps. This is me when you say that. <laughs> And, and now I, I mean, I actually had this conversation too. It's like, we have DevSecOps. It's like, sure you do. Cool. Because implementing DevOps is not a thing. Now, implementing DevSecOps is not a thing either. DevOps is never done. Security is never done either. Everyone wants DevOps, right? Everyone wants this. Well, actually, here's what they really want. They want scalability, availability, reliability, operability, usability, observability, all for free without changing anything. That's what they really want, yeah? Without changing anything. Like, I just, I'll just make that point really big. That's what they want. And then we get to DevSecOps. Everyone wants this, right? Without changing anything. That's what everyone wants. Here we are. So we don't want to forget how we do things here, right? So. I, 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 I'd love to talk about this topic for like a whole hour, but uh, does anyone know single loop versus double loop learning? So like the easiest way to understand this is single loop learning is how do we hit these KPIs, right? And then you have some model and you're trying to pursue it. Double loop learning is why do we have these KPIs, right? And, and should we have these KPIs? And like maybe we should change the KPIs. Anyway. So what's the resistance to change? One. Security is an unfunded mandate in a lot of places, right? And incentives drive behaviors, which is super weird, I know. Super weird. Another thing that I see, and this happened over and over in the DevOps conversation, I see it also happening in the in this InfoSec conversation, people attach their identity to their tasks. So when you tell them that you're gonna do things a new way, they actually feel like you're erasing them, like you're attacking their identity. So we have to make those people, as we can, heroes in a new version of this story. It's not just we're going to do things a new way. You're going to be awesome. I'm going to make you more awesome as security. Also, developers are under a lot of pressure to do things right now. And as a consequence, if we don't make doing the right thing the easy thing, they're going to do the right now thing every single time. I know, because I was a developer. So this is another thing that's happening, and I, I think this evolution of the DevSec ops tools will follow a very similar pattern to the, the Dev Ops tools, which is we start with like this ad hoc approach to like try to do things, and then at some point that becomes its own problem. And what we're seeing now in, in the kind of tooling around what I'll call DevOps is this consolidation into much more opinionated platforms. And at, from a security perspective, your platform has to audit and enforce your policy. If the software doesn't audit and enforce the policy, then you only have theatrics. Like you can't do it, especially at the scale that these infrastructures are moving, the scale and the speed that this stuff's happening. If you can't have the software audit and enforce your policy, then there's no way you're gonna be able to do it. And your policy might be different if you put cat pictures on the internet than if, you're, if people you know, live or die. So we wanna get to this continuous compliance world. So coming to the end, when DevOps is, or DevSecOps is successful, here's how you'll know. People will abuse the term. And then I also think this is going to happen. It will splinter into sub-communities. Because InfoSec is not one thing either. And we've, we're seeing this in the DevOps community. We used to talk about all of these things in sort of one place. And now there's little sub-communities that are specializing. So in what are the InfoSec analogs to observability, reliability, resilience, and chaos? And here's the parting thought. It ought to be remembered that there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more, more uncertain in its success than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things. Because the innovator has for enemies all those who have done well under the old conditions, and lukewarm defenders in those who may do well under the new. That's my boy, Nicola Machiavelli.
So, good luck. Have fun. Thank you.